point of whatever ideas we might come up with won't stop governments from thinking that they need to be more engaged. Um, I was at the Equisoc meeting yeah. last week where almost every single intervention still referenced, even after the whole WISDOM process of five years of capacity building and awareness raising, explaining the situation, they all still talk about unilateral control of the Every single Even one after one. the affirmation of commitments and the every transition? Stop. Every single one. I mean, obviously, with the exception of European and U.S. Canada. Was there even an acknowledgment? Wow. So you're suggesting it's a pretense. It's really a pretense for what they really want. I guess, Heather, you're saying that the uh, third driver, is sort of, it's, a, it's an inherent driver. There are government organizations who simply want to run this. The Internet's pretty important. Anything that important, governments ought to be running it. And uh, a lot of what we've been discussing in terms of scenario drivers. Okay. So this scenario just becomes a convenient excuse to take that action. But we shouldn't assume that if we, if we diminish drivers one and two, we have to believe governments will still want it. Right. But just the importance of the internet to economies, to governments. Uh, there's just a, a greater desire for governments to more Great point. Demands, not desire. Well, yeah. Well, and let me. I agree with you. Uh, I I still think we don't give up on capacity building because it has at, in other fora, uh, not quite maybe not at the ECOSOC level. It's had some impact. But I, I want to pose here the, uh, a question of whether we think that this is, uh, whether it's also a problem that, that industry itself has lost credibility, perhaps, because of our, uh, uh, have we followed through on our commitments uh, in terms of um, uh, assisting uh, de developing countries? Um, have we engaged to the extent that we can, uh, not just with the U.S., but our, our, uh, um, our subsidiaries and, uh, and um, uh, JVs around the world to make sure that the government and the, and the uh, consumer uh, uh, base, the uh, civil society, are aware of what's possible? Is there something that we should be looking to ourselves about to uh, to mm -hmm. uh, change change the complexion? Is it too late? I mean, just just to provoke here. No, that's great advice. There's more than just what the IGF must do. Right. There's what we need to do to avoid the scenario. You asked the question: Has industry followed through? I mean, to turn it into a recommendation, industry must you know follow through. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think Susan and and then you. I'm going to try to tackle both Chuck's observation and Wallace's observation and answer question five. Or Thank you. It would be great. Question five. Because what Chuck talked about, about governments moving too slowly, we really picked up the pace of GAC, but we still continue to be too slow. And unfortunately, many of the people are unformed or have their own political agendas that are completely unformed by uh, realities. I don't know how we change that. But in number five, mm -hmm. governments must become more passive. Okay. In number five, responding both to Chuck's observation and Walda's observation, I think when you look both at government and at private, or at least when you look at this scenario, which I don't think is too off the mark for anything we've seen today, um, we're reactive. We're not proactive. I know that there are many exciting initiatives going on in the private sector. I'm not aware of them. I can't compliment them. I don't want to suggest that they aren't. But this scenario and everything that I see in my Washington Post is we're all being reactive. This is a very negative scenario. It isn't full of positives like what are we doing for the developing countries in terms of e-learning initiatives 